welcome to one of the finest and most unusual health institutions in America. This is the famous Spears Chiropractic Hospital, mecca of health seekers from all over the world, located on 15 acres in the heart of beautiful Mile High Denver, Colorado, with the magnificent Rocky Mountains in the background. Denver is rightly called climate capital of the world, renowned as a health center because of this incomparable climate, clean, dry mountain air, sunny days year-round, great factors in restoring patients to a pleasurable state of mental and physical well-being. You're never a stranger at Spears. Visitors are impressed at the size and beauty of the grounds and buildings even before they enter the 600-bed hospital. This is the famous chiropractic insignia, the symbol of health and hope to more than 40 million people in the United States. Sick and crippled pass through these portals looking for the help that only chiropractic can give. This young lady, Sally Martin, is seeking aid for her brother, stricken with an ailment termed incurable by medical doctors. As Miss Martin passes through this spacious lobby, she is aware of an atmosphere as pleasing and welcoming as a friendly hand clasp. Approaching the information clerk, she inquires for Dr. Dan Spears, co-director of the hospital. But in pediatrics, miracles are everyday happenings, happy happenings. Now, this tiny patient is thoroughly enjoying the correctional exercise. pediatrician is explaining distortion of skull and pressure on various brain areas. Massage and passive exercise are also valuable in rehabilitating small bodies as well as large ones, especially youngsters suffering from birth injuries or afflicted with polio, muscular dystrophy, and other crippling disorders. Equipment such as standing boards and even massage and adjusting tables are sized to fit the small fry. This is one of the children's large sunny playrooms. Visitors, especially parents, exclaim over the fact that soon after children arrive, they settle down to enjoying themselves. There's rarely a case of homesickness here. As you can see, much of their play is also beneficial exercise in walkers, tricycles, strollers, kiddie cars, bicycles, and even the fascinating bucking horses. The spacious modern kitchen, equipped throughout with stainless steel, is a busy place while the preparation of meals is in progress. The best of food, an infinite variety of fresh vegetables, fruits, fish, and meats are served with special diets tailored to the needs of individual patients and along these kindly halls of health. Visiting time at Spears is also the period for outdoor walks and other activities. Patients are urged to take a constitutional, so there is a general exodus from the main lobby and through the many other doors for this pleasant outing. Fun in the sun is the order of the day here are more examples of that celebrated spirit of Spears, of friendly kindness and compassion for others, forgetfulness of their own ailments in their eagerness to aid fellow patients. Patients helping patients, a spirit manifest throughout the hospital. Those who are blessed with use of arms and legs pushing others in wheelchairs, others playing with children. In addition to the beautifully landscaped grounds and smooth green lawns, equipped with every type of comfortable garden chair, couch, chaise lounge, rocker sets, and gliders, Spears has large playgrounds, furnished with slides, swings, merry-go-rounds, seesaws, and other fun devices for youngsters. Also, other sport fields for horseshoes, croquet, badminton, volleyball. And now to show our visitor a few motion picture films of the living testimonials with which the hospital records abound. The patients who limped in 
or were carried in on litters and walk out under their own power. This man's back was broken during the fighting on Iwo Jima in 1945. He was a helpless bed patient for years before coming to Spears. In just a few months, he was restored to normal health and normal life. This attractive young lady limped into the hospital, a victim of multiple sclerosis. Her medical doctors told her there was no cure. She must just learn to live with it. But Spears doctors helped her to live without it, and she too returned home in good health and has since married. This pretty youngster was one of the pitiful polio cripples who came to Spears after other forms of therapy had failed to help her. She was able to discard her crutches within several weeks and not only learn to walk again, but to dance as well, much to the delight of her family. And even to turn a few somersaults to astonish her doctors. Another crippling disease known as Perthes, pronounced Partes, was the demoralizing ailment that brought this little fellow to Spears. His hip joints seriously damaged, his case pronounced hopeless. But Spears doctors did not so regard it, and that their efforts to aid this child were rewarded are proven by the subsequent pictures of a lively, active, healthy, real boy. At last reports, he was a normal teenager, above the average physically and mentally, a champion roller skater. Rheumatoid arthritis is a cruel crippler that attacks young and old. Walking even with a cane was a painful effort for this young woman when she came to Spears. Her hands, too, were deformed with the disease. But time and treatment remedied all that. She walked without the slightest limp before leaving the hospital and had completely recovered the use of her hands. Potts disease, tuberculosis of the spine, had crippled this pretty little girl who arrived at Spears weighted down with heavy body braces with the sad prognosis from her medical doctors incurable. Spears doctors refused to accept this cruel verdict. It was a long, slow process but the victory at the end of many months was well worthwhile when they watched the running, jumping youngster. She's now 15 years old and a beautiful specimen of young girlhood, takes part in all school sports, and is especially fond of swimming, she writes. One of the many patients who came to Spears in a wheelchair as the result of an injury to her spine due to an accidental blow, this attractive young woman was temporarily paralyzed from the waist down. After several weeks sojourn in the hospital, she was graduated from her wheelchair to a cane. Then, in another month, came the happy day when she could walk alone without any support. Another of those patients who was wheeled in and walked out.